Nom Nom delivers fresh food with whole ingredients, backed by veterinarian science. Science tells us that a dog's health starts in the bowl, so improving their diet is one of the best ways to help them live a long and happy life. Nom Nom's food is full of proteins your dog loves and the vitamins and nutrients they need to thrive. All you have to do is order, pour, and serve. Ready to make the switch to fresh? Order Nom Nom today. Go to https colon slash slash trinom.com forward slash curveball and get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's https colon slash slash T-R-Y-N-O-M dot com forward slash curveball. Plus, Nom Nom comes with a money back guarantee. If your dog's tail isn't wagging within 30 days, Nom Nom will refund your first order. No fillers, no nonsense, just Nom Nom. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by international best-selling author. He is Paul Zolman. Paul is the author of the book, The Role of Love, and he is also a love expert who is highly qualified to speak on the subject. And during this interview, he's going to tell you why. So let's jump into it. Paul, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Curtis. It's great to be with you. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? I Probably the best way to start out is um, I was thrown a curveball, kind of going with the theme of your your podcast. I was thrown a curveball when I was younger in that most people, most children – Parents would want to teach them to do the right thing first. My parents weren't weren't a great example of doing the right thing. I lived in an abusive childhood, abusive home, and it was, uh, you could say, kind of in an awkward way that I was trained to be an abuser. And that's that's not a curveball that I wanted. I, I decided early in life that... Um, I did not want to raise my children like that. I did not want to have that have that happen to them as well. And so I I just did a lot of things that I I could do at the time to try to get rid of the anger that was pent up from that type of environment. There's still a lot of residual anger that was was pent up. And I thought, how could I get rid of that anger? And so I I started uh, just started doing the best I could. And I, I really turned to God, turned to, to the scriptures, tried to see if I couldn't pattern my life to be like Jesus Christ. And uh, that that works to a certain extent, but then there's a certain point that you get to that you really, how do you make the next step? How do you get over that next hurdle? How do you get to that next level? And uh, probably the best way to d- describe this, Curtis, is that, I was uh, had just come off destination dating. Now I have to describe destination dating. A lot of your listeners may not know what that is, but what that is is where where I was finding women to date online, and then we pick a destination and then we'd have a date. So I was doing this for a year and a half. Been a great time. I just barely barely been divorced, and uh, just was kind of a midlife crisis that I was having. But I did it for maybe 18 months or so, spent over $10,000 going to places like New York City, Cabo San Lucas, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Snowflake, Arizona. Uh, Just went to a lot of different places, Las Vegas, a lot of different places that I went for these destination dates. The problem with that is that everybody was so far away. It's hard to develop a relationship far away. 
So after I was finished with that, I settled in, in the Phoenix area, hoping that this particular destination date that I had in Phoenix would materialize into something. It never did. So my sister lives up in, in Santa Clara, Utah. It's in the very southern part. It's only two hours north of Las Vegas. She, she saw that, or she perceived that I was lonely and that I needed somebody to talk to. So she introduced me to her neighbor, and the neighbor and I, I said, I said to my sister, I, I don't want to do destination dating again. It's a seven-hour drive from Phoenix, and there, there's really no airport for anybody to fly into at the time in St. George, Utah. And I thought, I don't want to do that again. But she said, oh, come on. And, you know, big sister, you have to do what big sister says. So I said, okay, I'll email her. We'll see how this goes. Started emailing her and started doing the messenger um, back in the time and and really got to know this person fairly well, fairly quickly. Uh, she was a great writer, and we just had a lot of fun back and forth that way. Then it came time to call her and, and develop a relationship. And then I ended up actually coming up here, started coming up here and came up here. I'd come up on Friday, leave Phoenix at five o'clock on Friday, get up here at midnight, Friday night, leave here Sunday at five and go back to Phoenix, be there at midnight um, on Sunday night. It was just grueling over the weekend, all that driving and just uh, just for to date this person. But just got to know her a little bit. I ended up moving up into this area, into St. George, Utah area, and uh, continued to date. It was time to take this woman up to meet my big brother and to have big brother approval. Uh, it's a 300-mile drive north, and we, so we went there. First thing that happened, Curtis, is that I took her in there. My sister-in-law pulled her aside, and she said, the only emotion that the Zolman family learned growing up is anger. At first, I denied it. Then it made me mad. I thought, huh, that's, I felt like that was really an opportunity to snuff that out once and for all, that if that's the, continued to be the perception of my family name, let alone myself, of the family name, I wanted to reverse that as much as I could. So I started reading the color code, which is all about love and about different colors. And then I started reading the five love languages. I liked the principles of the five love languages. I did not get the application that Dr. Chapman, I, I felt like Dr. Chapman was trying to tell me that if I guessed or if I found out what somebody's love language was and catered to that, then I'm going to be buddies. I'm really a bad guesser, Curtis, really bad guesser. So that didn't work for me. The second application that Dr. Chapman had was that, well, if you take this survey, then you can find out what your primary love language is. Then what? What do you do? Advertise? Hello? I'm Gifts. What do you have for me today? That was really just an awkward situation. So neither one of those was working for me. But I tried to figure out what could I do to make this app more applicable, be inside of me, change me inside. And a, a thought occurred to me, I liked games when I was a kid. I thought, what if I made this a game? So I contacted Dr. Chapman and asked him if they were licensing the icons that they had for the for the five love languages. They said no. The attorney wrote me a letter and said no. And then I t still had the idea, well, I may... I, Got to be able to make this a game somehow. I went to a, a copyright attorney here in, in town. He said that theory is not copyrightable. Application is. So I made my own icons. I put them on a die. And there's just two instructions. This is what the die looks like. I don't know if you can see that or, or not. But that's what the die looks like. As the different love languages on it. There you see service. Those are the words time, touch, gifts, and then there's six sides on the die, obviously. So there's so this one is surprise me. On that day, it's it's random acts of kindness. 
So just two instructions. You roll the die every day. That's the love language you practice all day that day. More than anything else, Curtis, this has changed my life. You, there's been counseling. There's been other things. But to, to get rid of the residual from an angry childhood, you have to replace it with something. I chose to replace it with love. So as I'm rolling the die, you notice that they're all pictures on the die, all pictures. So if I say the word elephant, you're not seeing in your mind E-L-E-P-H-A-N-T. -E you're seeing the picture of an elephant. When you roll the die with the pictures on it, you'll remember that picture all day long. It'll act as a memory hook for you so that you can remember I'm watching for opportunities to love in that way all day. It's not like I did the dishes, so whoo, I'm done. Not like that at all. No more is this an event. It's an all-day process. So as you're busy all day long watching for these type of opportunities, you have absolutely zero time to go the other route, to say, what's wrong with that person? And go down that critical road. You don't ever get there. You're always saying in your mind and, and out loud, what's right with that person? What can I love about that person? That was transformative to me. It became a full-time job. In Dr. Chapman's book, he also um, talks about giving love to your significant other. Well, most people are not with their significant other 24-7. So that really kind of was a part-time job, part-time loving. This is different. This is absolutely all day, every day to everyone. It's it develops that a mindset of love. It develops it's this this is a new curveball. You won't find very many people that are co constantly or consistently loving all day long. You'll find some that love a lot, but you'll find very few that consistently love, love all day long. So that's that's the backstory, Curtis. Okay, well, does this does this method that you speak about work for single people as well? It's a very, very good question, Curtis, because I, I actually developed this while I was single. And so I would say absolutely yes. In fact, it may work for single people more significantly than than any other. Maybe maybe not. It's it's just the same for for everyone that way. That if you're single, you're you're looking. You, you may be looking for love, but this is different. Instead of looking for love like I did while I was doing the destination dating, instead of looking for love in all the wrong places, there's a song about that. What I did was find love right where it was at. Everybody I met, trying to figure out is this is how can I love in this way this day and just try to be kind and, and loving to everyone you come in contact with when there's two a couple of things about that that if you send out love if you're investing in love and you're sending it out it may take a little while to come back I can guarantee you though with my experience if you send out anger you're going to get an immediate return on your investment it's going to come right back to you. Most people don't want that, but they do it, but they don't really want that. So it's better to just, just decide that you're going to love every day, set a theme for the day, which the die does for you, and then just follow that theme. There's, there's a lot, lot of happy things there. So tell us how this method can be beneficial in the workplace and if it was implemented in schools? Good question. Thank you very much. Um, just think of this as in the school situation. It, does, it takes maybe two seconds to roll the die. What I would suggest at a very early school, even in kindergarten or first grade, they can see the pictures. They can be taught what that picture means. And so that they, and they can respond appropriately. Obviously, they're, they're a malleable age at that time. They can... If the teacher sees something that's not quite within the love language, she can make, make some corrections. But the onus is on the student. The responsibility is on the student to watch for opportunities to love all day long. What you want to bookend that with, at the end of the day, that last 10 to 15 minutes of the day, 
which is kind of non-productive time anyway. The kids are anxious. They know the bell's going to ring. There's not much that really they're, they're, they're outside playing in their mind 10 to 15 minutes before the, that bell ever rings. So let's take that time. And I've got a journal page that they could write what they rolled that day, what opportunities they saw to love in that way that day, and then what they did about those opportunities. So from the start of the day, rolling the die, watching through the day for opportunities to love, and then having to report in school, having to report at the end of the day what they did about loving that day, kind of keeps them in the mode of of loving rather than anything else, rather than willy-nilly, come what may, it's themed on loving all day long. I think that this would actually help with a lot of misunderstandings. It would help with a lot of misbehavior. It would tamp that down enough that it would be make the classes so much more manageable. It's almost like students are ruling the class right now, and the teachers have n- no effect. They're they're just their their hands are tied, helpless. This would help that as well. The teacher is being there because they're loving. They want to help these children learn. They went into that profession because they thought they had an opportunity to be one of those magnificent teachers that they may have had while they were growing up. And that's helping them that way. In the workplace, it's the same principle. You know, after after you roll the die for about 30 days, it won't take more than 30 days, but... After th- more than 30 days, it will it will just sink in a lot deeper. You'll learn to give away. And this is all about them. It's never about you. It's all about them. So you'll learn to give away these different types of love over the 30 days. You'll lo- learn all five languages of love. What I like to call that person is a love language linguist. That's a sexy title, Curtis. You'll want that on your resume. And when you put it on your resume, guess what the employer is going to ask you? What the heck is a love language linguist? And then you'll just say, I just love people. That employer wants their customers loved. They want a loving work, love in the workspace. They don't want a lot of contention that would cause productivity to go way down. It would build the productivity. So by doing that, becoming a love language linguist, putting it in on your resume and having that employer going to that employer, that resume is going to rise to the top because you're going to be a loving person within that workplace. That's how you spread it to the workplace. So what do mental health professionals think about what you have created? I think there's a lot of mental health professionals, Curtis, that, uh, really did not like, maybe for the same reasons that I, I didn't like the five love languages, the application of it, but uh, and maybe they don't like the principle either. But I like the principle. I really like the principles. I think that, um, well, the first, the first uh, acknowledgement or the endorsement in the book is from a mental health professional. And it's just, it's that kind of thing. The mental health professionals, once they see this, once they see what it in action, they're a little skeptical because because of their past experience. I mean, the the five love language book has been out for since 1992, first published then, so it's been out for 30 years. That's a long time, and these they may have been trained that this doesn't work. This application absolutely does work. I'm 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 evidence myself that it works. It it just was a perfect replacement. Uh, behavior for the flashes or the things that that you w- you wouldn't think a flash of anger might define you, but I'm I'm probably pretty certain my father wasn't angry a hundred percent of the time, but for as a child, those were the moments that defined him for me, and it's unfortunate that it was that way, but those were the moments that defined him. And uh, I think that mental health professionals would would absolutely agree that you don't want those flashes of anger 
to define you. If your child is waiting for the next flash of anger to point at it and say, that's how you are all the time, it's not. It's absolutely not true. But that's what they remember because of the pain point. I think that this really would is is a help tool. You know, the gardeners have tools, mechanics have tools. There are not very many love tools out there. This is a love tool, a love tool that actually works. For me, it's been very effective. I've tested it with families and other individuals as well. It's been very effective that way. In fact, I'll tell you just a little story while we're talking about this, as far as mental health professionals might might consider this, that I had a family of there were five children. The youngest of the five children was a four-year-old. One day he rolled physical touch. He said he jumped up and down and, and was pumping his fists and say, Yes, physical touch. Yes, physical touch. And immediately he went to start beating up on his brothers. That's what he thought loving physical touch was. And his mother, when telling me the story, was trying to suppress the laughter uh, of just while he's in the moment, trying to suppress the laughter. And it became actually a loving teaching moment for that four-year-old boy. To This is appropriate physical touch. This is how we, we hug people. We pat them on the back. We, we touch their cheek. Just acts of kindness like that, that's appropriate physical touch. We don't hit them. And it's just a great teaching moment that way. Absolutely. So tell us about your book, what we can expect to find in it when we read it and where we can get it from. So the, so the book is available on my website. It's called The Role of Love. It's available on Amazon as well. But um, uh, it's called The Role of Love. It just became an international bestseller two two months ago, so it's just it's really starting to take get some traction and and take off a little bit. But it's just uh, about each one of the the different roles of love. Obviously, for the the languages of love, but there's also in there the role of authenticity, of being genuine about the love that you give. People can feel it if if you're just mocking them or doing something like that. They can feel it, and it's not genuine. You want to be absolutely genuine when you provide love. It talks about it in the book. So so that's that's authenticity. There's a role of observation too. One thing that I've found after rolling the die, whatever love language it is that I've rolled for that day, I find people that that. Um, that I have the opportunity to express love in that way that day to that person. And I found, Curtis, that when they light up, that's what they like. And so instead of instead of handing them a survey and say, could you take this survey so I know how to love you? Instead of doing that awkward type of situation, all you do is watch. You observe them. If they light up, take a mental note, that's what they like. Wash, rinse, repeat. Just do it over and over. That's what they like. And then you're just watching for those opportunities. So you get to know what people like by just sending it out instead of taking a survey or doing it any other way. In fact, I took the survey myself, and and of course, I came up with physical touch because that's what I thought love was when I was younger. If I wasn't getting whacked and the frequency of it, if I was, if that wasn't what was happening, I didn't feel loved at the time. Now it's a lot different. Now that I've learned how to learn how to give away all five love languages, my eyesight's improved. I can see it when it comes my way, even though it might not be my primary love language. I can see it when it comes my way and then react appropriately. That's the beauty of this this device, this tool that I've created. You learn all five love languages to give it away. It helps you see it when it comes your way. Tell us about any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about. So there is a journal that comes with the book, or it, it can be purchased separately. It's a journal that, as I was explaining about the, the school children, that there's a journal uh, with a book that um, has what you rolled that day, 
opportunities this, that you saw to love in that way that day, and then what you did about those opportunities. Who wouldn't have loved to have a journal like that from their mother or from their grandmother or from their grandfather? I got journals from my my grandparents, my mother, and uh, as well, and those journals told me about the weather. The weather 50 years ago, Curtis, who cares about the weather 50 years ago? How is that going to change my life? I would have loved to have a journal like this of love. What did they love at the time? What was there to love? What opportunities did they see? And what did they do about those opportunities? This is, be a, this is going to be a legacy book, this journal. So that's one project that we're working on. The second project is very similar. I'm working on putting together an app for this. I've almost got the, the prep work done for the app. So the app should be out shortly, probably within the next six months, I'm I'm guessing. Then then there'll be workshops. Next year, I'll be working on putting together workshops for this and just kind of rolling this out. Pardon the pun. Roll in the dice. Roll in the dump. Roll a blow. Well, throw out your contact info so people can keep up with everything that you're up to. So the contact info, the way to find me is the rolloflove.com. And you spell it R-O-L-E. R-O-L-E changes you inside. R-O-L-E of love.com. That's the change inside. R-O-L-L is rolling the dice outside of you. So if you remember it that way, just remember the, the website easily. R-O-L-E, rolloflove.com. And roll R, uh, that you're going to be rolling the dice. R-O-L-L, doing that outside of you, whatever you roll. If you work with that that day, it'll change you inside. So close us out with some final thoughts. Maybe if there was something I forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about it, just any final thoughts that you have for the listeners. I think that one one thing that I just want to touch on, Curtis, a little bit is that, you know, I could look back on this childhood event or this child this childhood of mine with the abuse and everything and have adversity be a, a foe. But I see it now as a friend. Even though I learned the wrong things to do when I was young, young, I turned it around, figured out a way to turn it around to do better things, to do the right things. And I think that uh, it's very similar to what I like to call the uh, the sunset uh, and sunrise uh, theory, that the very best sunsets and the very best sunrises all have clouds. The ones that don't have clouds aren't so spectacular. The ones that do have clouds are spectacular. So if you consider the clouds in your own life, the adversity that you face in your own life, consider the sunsets and the sunrises that are spectacular. That's what's going to shine through. That's what's going to mold your life. That's what's going to make your life so much more beautiful. Go through the trial. This is a great way to help you through that trial, to focus on love. I love love the, the whole idea of a magnifying glass. When you use a magnifying glass and it enlarges things, in this way, we want to enlarge the good that people do. Media doesn't like that. The media would focus on those things that are not so good. But who wants that? really want to focus on the good that people do and enlarge that. And that's, that's, that'll be my parting comment, Curtis. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Well, thank you. The role of love.com ladies and gentlemen, please be sure to pick up Paul's new book, check out his die and his app when it comes out and everything that he's up to. Please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible so we can spread the love. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, see Jackson 102 at Cox.net is the place to send them. As always, thank you for listening. And Paul, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, Curtis.
For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.